Dear friends, Bill and Ben are a shameless pair. I meant to write about mainline engines and give the twins a treat by letting them into the first story, but I couldn't keep them in order. Before I knew it, they had crept into the others. They even wanted me to change the book and make it about them. But I have been very firm. I am still calling it mainline engines. That will serve Bill and Ben right for ragging poor Gordon so disgracefully. He hasn't got over it yet. The author. The Railway Series. Book 21 Mainline Engines. Story 1 The Diseasel. Bill and Ben are tank engines who live at a port on Edwards Line. Each has four wheels, a tiny chimney and dome, and a small squad cab. They are kept busy pulling trucks for ships in the harbour and engines on the main line. The trucks are filled with china clay dug from the nearby hills. China clay is important. It is needed for pottery, paper, paint, plastics, and many other things. One morning, they arranged some trucks and went away for more. They returned to find them all gone. They were most surprised. Their drivers examined a patch of oil. That's a diesel, they said, wiping the rails clean. It's a wattle? asked Bill. A diseasel, I think, replied Ben. There's a notice about them in our shed. I remember coughs and sneezels spread diseasels. Who had a cough in his smoke box yesterday? Fireman cleaned it, didn't he? Yes, but the dust made him sneezel. So there you are. It's your fault the diseasel came. It isn't. It is. Stop arguing, you two, laughed their drivers. Come on, let's go rescue our trucks. Bill and Ben were gassed. But he'll magic us away like the trucks? Their drivers laughed. He won't magic us. We'll more likely magic him. Listen, he doesn't know you're twins, so we'll take your names and numbers off, and then this is what we'll do. Bill and Ben chuckled with delight. Come on, let's go, they said eagerly. Creeping into Edward's yard, they found the diesel on the siding with the missing trucks. Ben hid behind, but Bill went boldly alongside and stood facing the diesel on the points leading out to the main line. The diesel looked up. Do you mind? he asked. Yes, said Bill. I do. I want my trucks, please. These are mine, said the diesel. Go away. Bill pretended to be frightened. You're a big bully, he whimpered. You'll be sorry. He moved over the points, ran back, and hid behind the trucks on the other side. Ben now came forward. The diesel had to stop suddenly. Truck stealer, hissed Ben. He ran away too, and Bill took his place. This went on and on till the diesel's eyes nearly popped out. Stop, he begged. You're making me giddy. Two engines gazed at him side by side. He shut his eyes. Are there two of you? He whispered. Yes, we're twins. I might have known it, he groaned. Just then, Edward bustled up. Bill and Ben, why are you playing here? We're not playing, protested Bill. We're rescuing trucks, squeaked Ben. What do you mean? Even you don't come in our yard without asking. And you only take the trucks we give you. But, they both squeaked indignantly, this diseasel didn't even ask. He just took the lot. There is no cause to be rude, said Edward severely. This engine is a Metropolitan Vickers. These are electric type 2. The twins were abashed. We're sorry, Mr... Uh... Never mind, he smiled. Call me Boko. I'm sorry I didn't understand about the trucks. That's all right then, said Edward. Off you go, Bill and Ben. Fetch Boko's trucks, then you can take these. The twins scampered away. Edward smiled. There's no real harm in them, he said, but they're maddening at times. Boko chuckled. Maddening, he said, is the word. Story 2. Buzz Buzz. Book 
Boko reached the big station and arranged his trucks. Then he went to the shed and asked politely if he could come in. Duck was not pleased to see a diesel, but presently, when he found that Boko knew Edward, he became more friendly. And by the time Boko had told him of Bill and Ben, they were laughing together like old friends. Have they ever played tricks on you? asked Boko. Goodness me, yes, chuckled Duck. Edward is the only one who can keep them in order. You know, went on Duck, I sometimes call them the bees. A good name, chuckled Boko. They're terrors when they start buzzing round. Just then, James bustled in. What's that, Duck? Are you afraid of bees? <laughs> They're only insects, after all, so don't let that buzzbox diesel tell you different. His name is Boko, and he didn't. We- I wouldn't care, interrupted James. If hundreds were swarming round, I'd just blow smoke and make them buzz off. Buzz, 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 retorted Duck. James retired in a huff. James was to pull the express next morning. And when Duck brought his coaches, the platform was crowded. Mind your backs! Mind your backs! Two porters were taking a loaded trolley to the front van. Fred drove while Bert walked behind. Careful, Fred! Careful! warned Bert. But Fred was in a hurry and didn't listen. Suddenly, an old lady appeared in front. Fred dropped dead, but the luggage slid forward and burst the lid of a large white wooden box. Some bees flew out, and just as James came backing down, they began to explore the station. Someone shouted a warning. The platform cleared like magic. The bees were too sleepy to be cross. They found the empty station cold. James's fireman was trying to couple the train. They buzzed round him, hopefully. They wanted him to mend their hive. Then they could go back and be warm again. But the fireman didn't understand. He thought they would sting him. He gave a yell, ran back to the cab, and crutched with a jacket over his head. The driver didn't understand either. He swatted at the bees with the shovel. The bees, disappointed, turned their attention to James. James's boiler was nice and warm. The bees swarmed round it happily. Buzz off! Buzz off! He hissed. He made smoke, but the wind blew it away and the bees stayed. At last, one settled on his hot smoke box. It burned his feet. The bee thought James had stung it on purpose. It stung James back, right on the nose. <laughs> whistled James. He had had enough. So it had his driver and fireman. They started without waiting for the guard's whistle. They didn't notice till too late that they had left that train behind. In the end, it was Boko who pulled the express. He was worried at first about leaving his trucks, but Duck promised to look after them, and so it was arranged. He managed to gain back some of the lost time, and the fat controller was pleased with him. No one seemed to notice when James came back to the shed. They were talking about a new kind of beehive on wheels. It was red, they said. Then they all said, buzz, buzz, buzzed, and laughed a lot. James that for big mainline engines, they were being very silly. Story 3, Wrong Road. Thomas's branch line is important, and so is Edward's. They both bring valuable traffic, but their track and bridges are not so strong as those on the main. That is why the fat controller does not allow the heavier mainline engines such as Gordon and Henry to run on them. If, however, you had heard Gordon talking to Edward a short while ago, you would have thought that the fat controller had forbidden him to run on branch lines for quite another reason. It's not fair, grumbled Gordon. What isn't fair? asked Edward. Letting branch line diesels pull main line trains. Never mind, Gordon. I'm sure Boko will let you pull his truck sometimes. That would make it quite fair. Gordon spluttered furiously. I won't pull Boko's Dirty trucks! I won't run on branch lines! Why not? It'll make a nice change. The fat controller would never approve, said Gordon loftily. Branch lines are vulgar. He puffed away in a dignified manner. Edward chuckled and followed him to the station. Gordon, his driver, and his fireman all say it was the lady's fault. She wore a green floppy hat and was saying goodbye to her friend sitting in the coach nearest the guard's van. It was almost time to start. The fireman looked back. He was new to the job. He couldn't see the guard, but he did see something green waving. He thought it was the flag. 
Let's away, mate, he called. But the guard had not waved his flag. When Gordon started, he left some luggage, several indignant passengers and the guard all standing on the platform. Every evening, two fast trains leave the big station within five minutes. The 625 is Gordon's for the main line. Edwards, at 6.30, runs along the branch. By the time Gordon had been brought back, Edwards' train was overdue. You missed your path, Gordon, said the fat controller crossly. Now we must clear Edwards' train before you can start. This should have put everything right with the least possible trouble. But control of the big station made things worse. They forgot to warn the signalman at Edwards Junction about the change of plan. It was dark by the time the trains reached the junction, and you can guess what happened. Edward went through on the main, while Gordon was switched to the branch. It took the fat controller several hours to sort out the tangle and pacify the passengers. In the end, Gordon was left with his fire drawn, cold and cross on one of Edward's sidings. Bill and Ben peeped into the yard next morning. They wondered if Boca had brought them some trucks. There were no trucks, but they didn't mind that. Tease and Gordon, they thought, would be much better fun. What's that? asked Bill loudly. Shush, whispered Ben. It's Gordon. It looks like Gordon, but it can't be. Gordon never comes on branch lines. He thinks them vulgar. Gordon pretended he hadn't heard. If it isn't Gordon, said Ben, it's just a pile of old iron, which we'd better take to the scrapyard. Nah, Bill, this lot's useless for scrap. We'll take it to the harbour and dump it in the sea. Gordon was alarmed. I am Gordon! Stop! Stop! The twins paid no attention. Gordon shut his eyes and prepared for the worse. The twins argued loudly and long. Bill favoured the scrapyard, while Ben said that the cutting up in such places was something cruel. It'd be kinder, he urged, to give these remains a quick end in the sea. Besides, he went on, they would make a lovely splash. Gordon could not view either prospect with any enthusiasm. Up to that point, he had disapproved of diesels. They were, he considered, ugly, smelly, and noisy. But when he opened his eyes and saw Boko coming into the yard, he thought him the most beautiful sight he had ever seen. Boko, my dear engine, he gasped. Save me! Boko quickly sighed up the situation and sent Bill and Ben about their business. They were cheeky at first, but Boko threatened to take away the trucks of coal he had brought for them. That made them behave at once. Gorn thought he was wonderful. Those little demons, he said. How do you do it? Oh, well, said Boko. It's just a knack. Gorn thinks to this day that Boko saved his life. But we know the twins were only teasing, don't we? Story 4, Edward's Exploit Edward scolded the twins severely, but told Gordon it served him right. Gordon was furious. A few days later, some enthusiasts came. On their last afternoon, they went to the China Clay Works. Edward found it hard to start the heavy train. Did you see him straining? asked Henry. Positively painful, remarked James. Just perfect. Pathetic, grunted Gordon. You should give up and be preserved before it's too late. Shut up, busts out Duck. You're all jealous. Edward's better than any of you. You're right, Duck, said Boko. Edward's old, but he'll surprise us all. Bill and Ben were delighted with their visitors. They loved being photographed and took the party to the workings in a break fan special. On the way home, however, the weather changed. Wind and rain buffeted Edward. His sanding gear failed, his wheels slipped, and his fireman rode in front, dropping sand on the rails by hand. Come on, come on, come on, panted Edward breathlessly. This is dreadful. But there was worse to come. Before his driver could check him, his wheels slipped fiercely again and again. With a shrieking crack, something broke and backed at his frame, and splashes up and out of shape. The passengers gathered round while the crew inspected the damage. Repairs took some time. One of your crank pins broke, Edward, said his driver at last. We've taken your side rods off. Now you're a single like an old-fashioned engine. Can you get these people home? They must stop back tonight. I'll try, sir, promised Edward. They backed down to where the line was more nearly level. 
Edward puffed and pulled his hardest, but his wheels kept slipping, and he just could not start the heavy train. The passengers were getting anxious. Driver, fireman, and guard went along the train making adjustments between the coaches. We lose in the couplings, Edward, they said. Now you can pick your coaches up one by one, just as you do with trucks. That will be much easier, said Edward gratefully. So, with the fireman standing carefully in front, the driver gently opened the regulator. Come on, puffed Edward. He moved cautiously forward, ready to take the strain as his tender coupling tightened against the weight of the first coach. The first coach moving helped to start the second. The second helped the third. And so on down the train. I've done it! I've done it! puffed Edward, his wheels spinning with excitement. Steady, boy! warned his driver, skillfully checking the wheel slip. Well done, boy! You've got them! You've got them! And he listened happily to Edward's steady beat as he forged slowly but surely up the hill. The passengers were thrilled. Most had their heads out of windows. They waved and shouted, cheering Edward on. The fat controller paced the platform. Henry, for the special train, waited anxiously too. They heard a peep, peep. Then, battered, weary, but unbeaten, Edward steamed in. The fat controller stepped angrily forward. He pointed to the clock, but excited passengers swept him aside. They cheered Edward, his driver and fireman, to the echo before rushing off to get into Henry's train. Henry steamed away to another storm of cheers, but not before everyone knew Edward's story. Edward went thankfully to the shed, while Duck and Boko saw to it that he was left in peace. Gordon and James remained respectfully silent. The fat controller asked Boko to look after Edward's line while he was being mended. Boko was pleased. He worked well, and now they run it together. Bill and Ben still tease him, but Boko doesn't mind. He lives at Edward's station, but is welcome anywhere, for he is now one of the family. Donald and Douglas were the last to accept him, but he often helps with their good strains, and the other day, they were heard to remark, For a diesel? Your boat goes near such a bad sort of engine. That, from the Colondane twins, is high praise indeed.